Welcome to the Healthcare Business Secrets Show, where we interview industry leaders and break down exactly how they're dominating their markets so you can learn from the best and can double your revenue, double your impact, and double your time off. In this episode, we're talking with Mark Baunas. Mark used to live a life deprived of meaning and foundation. It wasn't up until his marriage ended when he realized things were wrong. He hit rock bottom and he even turned to alcohol and even made the decision of ending his life. As a direct result of his attempted suicide, Mark had an awakening that transformed his beliefs around his future and led to a business called Tribe Wanted that gained international media attention, featuring him on more than 200 media outlets on six continents and led to a five-part BBC TV series that aired in the UK, Australia and America. A book deal followed and Mark began speaking globally on his transformation from suicide to success. Mark has helped over five thousand coaches consultants experts and small businesses to build tribes and create powerful media attention grabbing stories as a result welcome to the show mark thank you so much for having me i'm really looking forward to, to chatting with you i know you've got a really interesting and amazing backstory and i think it's something that we all can can definitely learn from and then you're also doing some really fun stuff at the moment with facebook groups and tribe building and things like that that i think will be super relevant for our audience so i want to kind of pass it on to you give us a bit of a backstory on, on how you got to this place and, and, and talk us through what shifted for you, because, you know, I've been, uh, in, in a similar situation. I had a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. I did not, uh, have, you know, the, the nicest time as a child growing up and, and there was definitely self-harm and contemplation around, you know, ending my life and things like that. And, and I went through a transformation myself and, and I really use that as fuel for me. Um, but I'd love to know, uh, you know, your story and, and where you are now and how you're using all of that to help you impact more people. Beautiful. So, yeah, I'm originally from the UK, one of six children uh, in the UK, now living in Australia. And when I was uh, in the UK, I was brought up in a, a very Christian environment. I went to church every Sunday. I actually studied a degree in theology and I got married at a young age. And I was a church leader, I was speaking in churches on stages, and I'd written a book, I was publishing magazines. But I was struggling with with this kind of demon, uh, uh, which was the fact that I always knew that I was gay. I was married. I knew that I was gay. What I was being taught uh, in terms of the Bible was that homosexuality was wrong. So I speak on stages, but having this inner kind of turmoil, this conflict, and of course, everything kind of came crashing down. My marriage ended and I, I did. I literally turned to Google and I Googled most quickest and painless way to die. And that night I attempted to take my own life. And I woke up in hospital the next day, literally with this profound understanding. It was, it was incredible that we live life once, that we are here just once, as far as we know. And so I'd lived this life that I, it was a life that everybody else had told me to live, right? That you shouldn't be gay, being gay is wrong and be a Christian and all this kind of stuff. It was inherited faith and belief. And so I suddenly realized that life is a gift. It's, it's precious and that we can interact with it. We can touch it. We can mold it. And so I decided to see my future as this blank canvas on which I could paint whatever picture I wanted and came up with the crazy idea, uh, as you saw, to, to lease a 200 acre island, island in Fiji. And literally three months after attempting to take my own life, it was in 200 media outlets all over the world. And I realized it was the inner game. It was about mastering my mindset to understand that it doesn't matter what uh, situation I've been brought up in. It didn't matter uh, the fact that I was the first person in my family generationally to, to go to university. You know, it didn't matter the fact that uh, everything that I was being told about me, my sexuality was wrong. I get to define my life. It didn't matter what money we did or didn't have, what education I did or didn't have, that was irrelevant. I can live the life that I choose depending on the, the inner game business success or failure mm. starts or ends in the mind. It's so interesting because literally I feel like every single person that I bring on the show and talk to, it's this, it's this almost the same conversation. When we get to a certain point of realization, a certain point of success, a certain point of fulfillment, uh, and however you want to define success, you know, business, finance, life, family, whatever, it comes down to mindset. And when we're not achieving what we want, we immediately look for the tactic or the strategy. And we're talking about this pre-show because it's almost like I'm stuck and I feel like the thing that I, that I need to change is, is what I'm doing. Mm. And I feel like that's part of it, right? Like if you don't have the right strategy, of course, you're not going to achieve the right outcomes. But 
what shifts it, and, and I've learned a lot of this through Tony Robbins, is when you, when you shift your headspace first, suddenly strategy becomes easy. Whereas I can give you the best investment strategy in the world and you're not going to go and do it. And if you do, you're not going to do a good job and you're probably going to make mistakes and you're not going to be motivated and you won't stick it out long enough. And we see that. I know you see this as well with, with clients. I see this with clients every single day is the ones who don't have the mindset right first, they, they cannot apply the strategy to get an outcome. And it's interesting. It just keeps coming back to that. It's like mindset, mindset, mindset. So when you're, when you're going through this yourself, you've had this kind of epiphany, if you will, have had this transformation, suddenly you're seeing things differently. Immediately, you would have had probably a whole lot of energy towards this outcome. Did you have your voice in the background still whispering some bullshit to you? Uh, did you have other people around you whispering things to you? And how did you combat that from pulling you back? Or did it kind of just feel like the separation? Like, I just do not care what my brain says or what anybody else around me says. I'm on this mission. Like, what did it feel like? Yeah, it's a great question. So for me, it was, I had this idea and there are people around me that were telling me that it was a bad idea. Um, there are people telling me I should just go and get a job. Um, in fact, I was telling my parents because I was actually homeless because I lost my job, you know, in, in the church. Um, I had to move back to the other side of the UK to live with my parents. And I was telling my parents about this idea and they didn't get it. They didn't understand, but they kept me going because they saw that it, it was it was helpful for my mindset to be in a positive place of moving forward. And mm. I never forget the day that we literally sat down as a family to watch this show on the BBC. And my mum turned to me and she was like, I've I've never understood this. I, I never got it. I really, it just didn't make sense to me, but I didn't want to put seeds of doubt into your mind because it was taking you in a positive place away from the negative place that you've been through and now we're sitting here watching this as a family on tv and and congratulations and well done on what you've achieved and so that was a beautiful moment but of course there are still doubts and when we're launching our businesses and when we're growing businesses there's always doubt and one of the things that I, I, really struck me is the fact that the business that I started was a brand new business. It was an eco island from scratch. It was pre crowdfunding crowdsourcing days. And we were literally spearheading something new. And many people say, well, you know, you've got to follow the path of others and improve something. And if you try and be the, the leader and create something new, then you're going to waste a lot of money and burn a lot of money. And, you know, you've got to question whether that's a good idea. But the reality is that those that change lives, that change the world, that break through, actually come up with crazy ideas and execute on them. I always say, you know, imagine the Wright brothers creating the concept of a plane and if people tell people turn around to them and said rubbish idea never going to happen you know not going to work if they'd have listened to those people around them we would never have the ability to travel overseas to meet new people to start new kind of cultures and, and worlds and economies and systems and you know so we've really got to trust ourselves when we're growing and building our businesses it's amazing. And, and I love that you said that. And now I don't know the, the story and I'd love for you to, for t to tell me, but what I heard and maybe I heard it wrong is that mum was not, was, was mum supportive or was mum just not negative? She was not negative, but this is an online world that she didn't know anything about. So she wasn't negative, uh, but she had no idea. But she, she, it's kind of funny. She was a champion from the side, having no idea what I was talking about because she could see that it was taking my mind in a positive place. Yeah, and, and I think that's interesting because she definitely, and this is an assumption, but I can assume it for 99% of people, would have been conditioned herself to immediately want to just throw negativity in because society has told us almost to do that and we just unconsciously do it. And it's, it's interesting that she saw, I best not give seeds of doubt because it's, mm. this thing is giving you direction. Now, whether she knew it or not, and that's not really, you know, the, even the, the point of what I'm saying is the interesting thing is that she could see in you, hey, you've got good energy, you're heading in the right direction. And it's interesting that because what you went through meant mm -hmm. that people were willing to allow you to go off on this fairy tale to be positive because it was pulling you away from this bad situation. And I think to myself, imagine if we did that to ourselves every single day without having to have bad shit happen, or the people around us did that to us, or as parents, we did it to our kids. And so when I'm looking at my son, um, 
and, and I'm looking at the things he wants to achieve, the things he wants to wear, the things he wants to do. Like he's not even two years old, but the other day he wanted to wear two pairs of shorts over the top of his pants. And I said, go nuts. Everyone's looking at him saying, why is he wearing pants? I'm like, why not? I think it's cool. Like who cares? And they didn't get it, but I understood that it, it was part of their programming. And it was like mm. this, people just have to try and share opinions or tell us why it's not going to work when they're not, they're not even connected to the outcome. Why do you think it is that people just want to, maybe it's not destructive. Maybe they don't want, they don't want to bring us down. Maybe they're trying to protect us, but they try and protect us with a lot of negativity as if to say, don't step outside of the norm because something might bad, something bad might happen. Do you think that's self-preservation for themselves? If we're part of their community, do you think it's because they want to be negative? Do you think it's because they're trying to save us? Why do you think a lot of people do that? I think, I think there's, there's, there's two sides to it. One is the fact that, you know, people don't like other people to succeed. It's always, and certainly from the UK, there's always launching a business. Mm. It was, why should you succeed? And how dare you think that you should be the one that does this when we're struggling or we're going through what we're going through. There was no kind of champion approach. And yet in the, in Aust in America, it was very much, you, you've not launched a business. You're not an entrepreneur until you've launched a business and you've gone bankrupt and you've started again. You know, mm. I don't even consider you an entrepreneur but i think the other side to it is this that you talk about your son and you talk about the you know two two pairs of shorts and and we can kind of bring that back to business in terms of we're too attached to the outcomes of of certain strategies and activities in our business that slows us down so my focus is to be detached from the outcome mm -hmm. your son he's two years old he doesn't care it doesn't matter doesn't matter what people think or say about him. But in business, if we launch a lead generation Facebook ad, something that doesn't work, or we have a sales call and we don't get the results, and therefore we feel like we're rubbish, we're too attached to the outcome, and therefore, you know, we 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 spend a week thinking about the things that we could have done better. Mm. I quickly learned in business if we if I stop being attached from the outcome and just learn from every single action that I take good or bad, there's no good or bad because I'm learning, then I accelerate the results in my business a lot faster. Yeah, definitely. I like that. Detach from the outcome. I like to focus on my outcome for what I'm trying to achieve. But thinking about what you're saying, uh, I'm the same. I'm doing the thing to get an outcome. And I know why I'm doing it, but I'm not attached to the outcome being there or not. And therefore, I'm not afraid of failing because I don't I, it doesn't even enter my mind. Like if I'm like, I'm going to start a podcast show. I'm not thinking about what if it fails. I'm thinking this is the thing I need to do that's going to get me to the next thing. And if it doesn't, I'm going to have learned a whole lot of stuff and taken a whole lot of actions. But even then, like my head doesn't say to me, what if it doesn't work? My head always says to me, well, of course it's going to work. And so I just kind of keep doing stuff anyway. Now I trained myself into doing that because every single day it's a battle. My head immediately wants to doubt me uh, and I just tell it to, to F off. Um, so what are, what are some strategies do you think for people who are listening to this thinking, you know, I am too attached to the outcome. It, it, it does stop me from taking actions. I, I listen to what other people think about what I'm doing and, and listen to what they say too much. And, and I know that I could achieve more if I was to let those things go, but I feel like I'm stuck. What advice would you give to them to kind of let that mm. stuff go and, and, and go after what they want? Well, the harsh truth is that if you're going to be attached to the outcome, if you're going to listen to the negative voice of others, and, and that's kind of something that you focus on, stop your business. Like, like seriously, I mean this genuinely. Stop your business now because you're wasting time and you're wasting money and you're never going to get the breakthroughs that you're looking for because you're too consumed with will this work or won't it work or the negative words of others. You've got to focus. We don't have time in business to, to mess around with worrying about the words of others or, you know, or, or things going wrong. Have that end goal in mind. Where do you want your business to be? This is what I think about. Where do I want my business to be in 10 years time? And then any individual step that I take, it doesn't matter of the, the result of that step. Now, this is totally different to when I first started and I struggled to sell my service in $100 an hour. I was on the phone every single day and I hated it. And at the end of the calls, you know, I would say, well, look, what I'll do is I'll send you an email with regards to my services. And, you know, we'll, if you're interested, get back. If you're interested, get back. Guess how many people bought my products or services? Nobody, right? Mm. And it's because I was so attached to the fact that I needed money. I needed the money to come in for two reasons. One, to pay the rent, but the other to 
convince myself and my partner that I can actually run a business. So when I started to realize, okay, if I just give value in this call, and I don't care about whether they buy or they don't buy, and I focus on what I learn, then suddenly I went from struggling to sell my service in hundred dollars an hour to building a multiple seven figure business. And I, I remember one specific year, I made a million dollars in sales on my own through phone calls every single day, day in, day out. And my goal was to do that, to make a million dollars in 12 months. But the goal was just to learn from every single call. What could I improve? What could I improve? So I focus on, so there's two things that I focus on. One, we have our comfort zone and we know that in business, we, we tend to do the things that are in our comfort zones. So every single day I first started my business and it was like, I'm going to do these things. I love playing around with websites and, you know, logos and designs. It's never going to grow my business, but it was comfortable for me. So I did it. And yet I realized that actually outside of the comfort zone, there were these fear-based tasks, these things that I was scared of doing, scared of mastering sales, right? scared of launching new lead gen or Facebook ads or whatever it was. So every single week I thought about what is it in my fear-based tasks that I need to master this week. And I would face mm. myself in that furnace with that fear so that that fear then became my, in my comfort zone, right? So then I could do that thing. And then I focused on what else is the fear-based task? Because when I focus on what I'm afraid of, that's when I exponentially grow my business. Well, that's the irony that if, if you're doing the stuff that makes you comfortable, it's, it's, it's in everything. But if you're doing the stuff that makes you comfortable, there's no growth there at all. There's no energy. There's no fuel. There's no growth. That's why people get stuck in trying to decide on the name of their business or the logo and the colors, which has zero effect on your success. My logo to this day, and you can go to my website and see, is I typed up my name in a font that I liked on Google, Google Docs, and I screenshotted it. And then I just stick it in there because I'm like, wow. I needed something like that's all like, and it's embarrassing and I, and I will change it. But now it's kind of part of the story. And so I'm kind of keeping it there because it's, it's to the point I've made multiple millions of dollars with a logo. That's a screenshot of my name, right? Like let that sink in for everyone who's currently working on with design teams to make logos. It does not matter because that's, that kind of task is not going to get you the growth. And it's, and it's usually because it's also a comfortable task. Now, if, if the uncomfortable task was doing a design thing for something new and there's this feeling of anxiousness that, you know, that, that fear energy, I feel like then maybe go in that direction. It's like training at the gym. If you're, if you're lifting weights and it feels easy, then you're not lifting hard enough and you're not going to grow and it's pointless. Going to the gym and power walking on the treadmill is not going to do anything. You know what I mean? Like you need to be uncomfortable. Um, and businesses is 100% about being in your uncomfortable zone, pushing yourself because that's where growth comes from. And immediately it becomes comfortable. It's I need to stretch further. And, and I found that myself. Like I'm, I'm on the phone to people, talking to people who could be my parents about how I'm going to help them grow their business. And I'm like, no one's going to take me seriously. I look 12 years old. You know, I sound, uh, I sound like a, a little girl. My voice is not deep and manly and blah, blah, blah. And all these things are in my head. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just really, really good at Facebook ads. And I know how much money it can help people with. And so I just started focusing on giving value. And immediately we get value in return because now we're not trying to sell something. It was the same thing in my clinic. I'm telling a 65 year old gentleman about how I'm going to fix his pain when his doctor couldn't. But I just, I had to believe in, in, in the certainty of knowing that I can get an outcome and doing it anyway and not being attached to whether he says yes or not. And immediately the energy of the conversation changed. And of course they said yes. Uh, so I think there's a lot we can take from that. Um, I want to get tactical. And it's the same as well. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's the same. It's exactly the same when we, you say we get busy on stuff to make ourselves think that we're running the business when we're actually we're not. So mm. I hear like you, so many stories of people that spend, you know, I can't launch my business yet. I can't grow my business because I've got to get the, the right website and I'm paying $5,000 for this website. And when that's done, then I'll do this. And, you know, it surprises most people to know that I, I made my first million dollars without a website whatsoever. I had no website. I was just building tribes, which is what I do. I have a Facebook group now, 34,000 people. And I was in there every day, giving value, building relationships and just converting. Mm, yeah, hundred percent. It's, it's, there's never a situation where you say to yourself, I can't do it because this people say to me, I can't start my practice or grow my practice until I've got this government thing or this qualification thing here or this thing here. And I'm in healthcare, right? We've, it, it, it's legitimate that you cannot practice unless you're qualified or have the regulations. But that doesn't mean you can't grow your business. Mm. That means you might not be able to currently see a client in that capacity. But guess what? You still know a whole lot of stuff. Start a Facebook group, 
start running ads, start conversations, do workshops, teach things for educational purposes only. If you're watching and listening to the audio, you didn't see me do the air quotes, right? Educational purposes only and get out there and educate and connect with people and build an audience because the best businesses have audiences. And then when you open your doors and say, now I can practice the medicine or the technique or the whatever, suddenly you've already given value. You've already grown the business. Now you can deliver on that. And half the time you're ending, you know, you can, you can pivot and be one of those people who don't have any qualifications in A, B or C, and they have an amazingly booming online coaching business, for example. So there's a, you know, I think when you ever say to yourself, I can't because A, um, you've already lost and you should just go and get a job because you're always going to be in your own way. You have to let go of that. And you've really spoken into the kind of heart of what it is that we teach. So building tribes, we focus on uh, movement, then we focus on monetization and then momentum. And so many people launch products, services and programs, and they don't make any money for two reasons. One, they don't have an audience. And two, because they don't have an audience, they're just creating something that they think is a good idea. They don't even know whether there's an audience that needs it. So so many people buying into, you know, this, the, the program that teaches you how to uh, create a webinar that generates six figures. Nobody is get, you're not going to make six figures, figures to the webinar if you don't have an audience to go and watch that webinar. So mm. as you say, build your audience first, connect with them at that deeper level. And then when you have a product to launch, you're going to have a hungry bunch of buyers who are ready and committed because they love you, what it is that you teach and the value that you've given them already. Yeah. Let's get tactical for a second. What are you doing at the moment using groups? Is it Facebook groups? How are you managing your communities? What are you doing to grow them? Like, just talk to me about, about your strategy at the moment and the stuff that you're doing with your audience, but also your clients. Yeah, cool. So we focus on building tribes, and we have what we call the tribe to authority shift. So the goal is that you build a tribe that positions you as an authority. So then you never have to worry about leads again because people are coming to you. That's how I recently got to speak on a virtual stage with Tony Robbins and had 200 of his direct audience become my clients overnight because they knew that they needed to build tribes. And I want to make that distinction because any social media platform is not the tribe it's a vehicle for the tribe so people come to me and say mark i've got i've got a tribe i've got an instagram following a hundred thousand people say cool how much money are you making and this guy said a hundred dollars a month that's not a tribe right mm. so the tribe is the journey and the experience that you're taking people on that transcends any social media platform it transcends email it transcends podcast it's the heartbeat of your work so i just want to make that distinction first so with facebook groups so facebook groups are certainly what we use as one of the vehicles for the platform and we go as one of the vehicles for the tribe. We go live every day with content, but we have a team in that group every single day, building a relationship with people, connecting with people and having them book in calls. So we're literally mining that group in terms of just building those connections at that deep level. And I believe that that is what is working right now. Yes, we run Facebook ads, you know, we run paid strategies, but there's nothing like building a relationship and a connection at that deeper level so that you're having one-to-one -one conversations, it's conversations that convert. Mm, okay, awesome. So you're, you're saying, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, of course, but you're saying we wanna focus on bringing people together into a place where we can essentially not broadcast a bunch of crap, but actually engage with those people, not just sharing memes and articles and things we find, but engaging in content that's gonna hook people into a conversation build trust, build authority, show them what you know what we're talking about, and then we're able to present them with opportunities. Do you do, you do kind of like a, a promotional cycle when you're wanting someone to become a client, or do you do kind of like soft pitches every time you're, you're doing content? How do, you, how do you usually do it? So when I say give value, I believe that the age of information is over and people want support in terms of implementation. So a great example here is that we run something. So a great example, actually, is I used to run an evergreen webinar and a webinar that generates a million dollars. And that's how I got this beautiful two comma club award that you see behind me right here for those that are on um, uh, watching the listening imagine the beautiful two comic club award a gold disc but the point is that stopped for a certain stage it stopped and i was like why this is generating a million dollars why are people stop booking in 
And as I went to my audience, people are sick of information. They want implementation. So we launched uh, what we call the Group Launcher Life Challenge, which is a 14-day challenge in which over 14 days, you will launch a Facebook group based upon our tribe builder principles that's enabled us to generate multiple seven figures from a Facebook group. You have that launched at the end. There's content that you watch every single day. You post your homework in the private Facebook group. We have a team all over the world that are in there every day responding to your questions, refining your homework. I have my movement mentor who it goes goes live in that group every single day so that by the end of it there's a there's a graduation webinar by the end of it you've launched your tribe you've got people in your community your many people are making money and then you can choose to continue to work with us or not but the point is whether you don't work if you don't work with us you've still got this thing that will add value to your business that you can continue with for many years to come even if you don't become a client of ours mm. so practically support that gives value and of course as a result of that we convert highly because people want to they constantly send to us if that's what we get at the free level or what's not free it's 47 dollars if that's what we get at the 47 dollar level what's it like to work at the next level with mark yeah exactly exactly i love it um if if we were wanting to come up with our own in the health space type challenge um, because I've seen uh, some people, I've brought some people in the show who are doing this sort of thing as well. And it's working really well in terms of um, creating value and drawing people in. <clears throat> Excuse me. What should we be thinking about uh, in terms of that as a hook, as a way of bringing people in? So the challenge, it has to have a clear, has to have a clear outcome. So by the end of the challenge, they will what? They will X. So think about the biggest pain point that your audience has. What's the, the, the number one problem that keeps them awake at night? And I understand. So we run a 14 day challenge and we also run seven day challenges. I appreciate you can't necessarily give the result in 14 days or seven days, but you can create a blueprint. You can shift the needle for them. So whether it's health and losing weight, uh, it might be going out every single day, exercising, changing their diet, looking at the diet that they currently have now and how they can change it for them specifically, unique to their, their needs. So you want them to walk away with something. Yeah. So that then they become this kind of raving fan because they've got an outcome, right? Yeah. And the goal of the challenge is to solve a problem, but but to create another problem. So commercially, the goal is to solve a problem. So for us, it solves a problem in that they've created a Facebook group and they now have people coming into their group. However, then the question is, well, the problem is, well, how do I bring more people into my group and how do I convert and monetize? Or well, so we can help that at the next level. Did I hear that right? You said the goal is to solve a problem and create a problem. It's like you solve the immediate pain and then create a positive problem, right? I now have a group, uh, and now how do I how do I fill it or how do I monetize it? In terms of healthcare, it could be something like, you know, I'm I'm on a journey, I'm beginning my exercise, and I'm starting to 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 get into the routine. The problem is now, how do I get better results? Or maybe I've, you know, let's say I'm being arbitrary here, and I probably wouldn't recommend doing something like this specifically. But let's say it was like a seven day ergonomic challenge, seven days to get your desk office desk set up. And you're like, cool, yeah. my office desk is set up and I'm feeling a bit better, but now I actually need to fix the problem at hand, which is my spine, for example. And so the, the, the challenge is both to solve a problem and give an outcome, but also tee them up for your bigger program, your bigger service, your bigger offerings, Absolutely. right? Correct. Yeah. Amazing. Do you run ads to this? So yeah, we go out organically and we run ads to it as well. And, and the beautiful thing about the ads is that it's a slow offer. Um, so what that means is it's a self-liquidating offer, i.e. it's $47. So whilst I was running the Evergreen webinar and I wasn't charging people to watch the webinar, I was spending $4,000 a week uh, on, mm -hmm. on Facebook ads run to the webinar. Now uh, we spend, it's about $15,000 a challenge, but we get that money back because people pay to join the challenge. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to ask some technical questions here. Uh, and I hope that everyone listening pays attention to this because this is some high level stuff. When you're running your $47 challenge, do you have upsells in there as well to help with um, cash flow? Do I have what? Sorry, Mr. Up, up, upsells. Do you sell yeah, into a 47 course. challenge with some upsells? Great question. So yes, $47 on the front end. And then there is an order bump, which is $27, which is a, a lifetime's access to the content. Yep. 
they can $47, they get access to the content for 14 days. If they want it beyond that, $27. And then we have uh, a one-time offer afterwards, which is $97. And that is a live hot seat session. So on week two of the challenge, uh, we have a live hot seat session. So they join us live and we answer all their questions live in Zoom. So yeah. it's between $47 to about $181 that they can spend. Yeah. Amazing. So what this does, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about here is you're offering a product on the front end. And then as the person goes to pay, you're saying, you know, I know that you're buying your burger. Would you like fries with that? Right. Yep. The bump is where you usually get more, uh, becomes more cash flow positive. It costs McDonald's as an example. I can't believe I'm talking about McDonald's on a, uh, for health reasons here, <laughs> but right. McDonald's, it costs the money to get you to buy a burger. They make the money on the fries and then the drink and then the other stuff and then the return visit. So what we're saying is we're saying 47 for a challenge. Then we're saying 27 for a bump, um, which is to say at the end, buy this as well. And then once they've purchased that, you make them another offer, something that solves the next, you know, scratches the next itch, right? Not more of the same stuff. So if you're selling a thyroid program, uh, it's like a challenge and then you give them worksheets or something for $27 or whatever price you want, you're not going to offer them another thyroid challenge, right? You're going to offer them the next thing immediately that they feel like they need to get uh, a part of, which I like that. And you said the hot seat. So that means that people are like, cool, I'm in this thing. Or I get the chance to actually go on like an, a special extra training and get direct access. Um, in doing this, do you do it in 14 day sort of launch cycles? Like would you run ads or organic to fill it up? And then it's, you know, you, you close the doors for 14 days and then do it, or is it evergreen? So we run ours live every single month. Yeah. Okay. So you run it, you'll run it and then you'll go through another promo cycle after. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. one of the beautiful things that we have is that we have at the end of the challenge, we have what we call an ethical bribe, uh, which is if they would like uh, my exact funnel, uh, the, ever, the million dollar webinar funnel, um, yeah. we give them something and in exchange for that they go live in the video to answer three live in the group to answer three questions uh, what was the biggest takeaway from the challenge um, what was their life like before the business like or their life like before the challenge and if somebody was watching the video sitting on the fence deciding whether to do the challenge or not what would they say to them so then we've literally got we've got i'd say over 200 videos yeah. So then we've got them on the testimonial page so that when uh, we, we do the ads again, it's just got this more and more hold on this guy's helped, you know, hundreds and like over a thousand people through this challenge. How come I'm the one that hasn't been through this challenge I need to be in? I love that. So you give something, is that you're giving it away for free in exchange for them making a video or going live answering questions, which you can then chop up and if it's not succinct and turn it into a testimonial. Otherwise you take those videos and use them as testimonials, right? That's amazing. That's Let's go. So, and of course, we of course we say, yeah, I don't want you to do this if you've got value from the challenge. But the, we have a whole SOP, systems and procedures and processes around the challenge so that we know they get a good experience. We've mastered this process like crazy. That's amazing. If if there's anything that that you take from this episode, it's I'm going to say it's that the ethical bribe, the saying, hey, if you've got value, uh, in exchange for you letting us know the value that you've got so I can understand, you know, the results you've gotten and celebrate with you. I'm going to give you something as a gift. Now, people who got some value are also going to go and do it anyway and, and probably pump it up. So in exchange that they can get it, but you're going to get a whole lot of people who would may not have thought to give you a testimonial, may not have felt comfortable, et cetera. They're going to jump out of the woodwork and say, yeah, sure. Cause now they get this offer, which is you giving them more value, but it's also, um, it's a great exchange for you because you can go and use it. There are so many of us that, that we have all these clients getting these insane results, um, but they just don't share them. They just, because they forget to, they don't, they feel uncomfortable. They don't know where to or how to. And so you've developed a framework that's a couple of simple questions. Um, give me a video in the group. They're already part of this group. They've been with the people in it. They've been working with you, with the other members. They're feeling part of a tribe themselves where they want to share. Um, and you get some insane testimonials, which you can stack for the next challenge. I absolutely love that. This is amazing. If, if, yeah, Sorry, do you want to say anything else? I'd love, I'd love, yeah, just one more thing. One more nugget that's really helped with the challenge is that when people join, they're in the excitement of starting the challenge. So they, they start with pre-challenge training. So let's say it starts on the Monday of the month, the first Monday of the month. Mm. Let's say they've joined 
I don't know, like 10 days before. Well, we want to give them some, 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 something to do straight away. So we give them some videos, pre-challenge training videos where they watch the videos and they post in the group. Now, one of the things that's really helped kind of lift up the, the kind of numbers of people joining is that then once they're in the hype and they're ready to, to start, we say, look, it's always better to go through this challenge with a buddy who's in a similar situation to you. So what we'd love to do is to give you an affiliate link so you make money from anybody that you bring into the challenge, but why not hold yourself accountable to somebody and with somebody so that you go through the challenge together? So then we have people joining and they've got the affiliate links. So basically they've paid for the cost of the investment that they've made into the challenge, but they've got three or four people that they've also bought along. And now they're going through this experience together. People come for content, they stay for community. So we're really building the community. And then afterwards, when it's like, well, you've upsold into Mark's next level product. Well, I want to as well, because we've been doing this together. So let's go on this journey of achieving X, the results of the challenge together. I love what you said. People come for content, they stay for community. And I think this is ridiculously pertinent for all of us in health businesses. People come because they think you have an answer to a problem, but they stay because they value you, your team, your energy, your content, what you're offering them for their life, that community aspect. And that could be just that, that, that interaction between you and that person. A tribe doesn't have to be 50 people. It can be you and, and, and that client. Um, but if you're able to create community within your practice, so for example, for us, we have a, an open kind of treatment area. Uh, as a chiropractor, we have multiple tables, multiple practitioners, simultaneously clients. They, they, two strangers will walk into that treatment space talking. They'll lie on the tables. They'll get adjustments. They'll finish. They'll sit up. They'll talk to each other and they'll leave. And there's a community yeah. feel. This is why clients come in and once they're a client of ours, they stay for life. Uh, and they keep seeing us and they understand the value and they choose to see us. We don't force people into, into treatment plans. We offer them to people and then we continue to work with people if it's working for them and they just stick around. They don't go, oh, cool. I'm going to call you in six months when my back hurts again, because they know that their friend uh, is there on Tuesday at 6 PM. And there's this, this pull to turn up to their appointments. There's this pull to stick around because we're creating community. So remember that people come for the content, which is your services, the, 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 the pain solving stuff that you've got, they're sticking around for the community. And if you're able to draw people into your world through something like a challenge like this, I think that would be insane uh, for um, my mind's running mil miles an hour here. That's so good. You bring people in on a challenge, you get them in on a challenge and they're bringing their friends and family along with them. And then they're coming into your practice. The, the perception of you is going to be way higher. They're not going to be there just because they want the treatment. They're going to be there because of the community. They're going to be there because of the process they went through before and they're going to stick around. And so your lifetime value of every client and customer or patient is going to be 10 times what it was before. This is amazing. Um, well, look, I, I don't. Uh, jump sorry, very quickly. When I very quickly, because I know we need to finish. So when I uh, created this business in Fiji and I reverse engineered, why was this so successful? And I created eight tribe builder principles and well, I won't go into them now, but one of them is moments of magic. And that's exactly what you're describing that I can have a community of 34,000 people, but I still want every single individual to feel special to feel connected mm. with me and with one another. So what you've, you've mentioned there about your practice and how they're, they're all kind of getting worked on together, that's a moment of magic where it's like, I really wanna go back to that place because I wanna kind of get out of the, the busyness of the world that I'm in and just connect and, and have that moment of magic in that place that, that you've created there, James. That's, that's really special. Yeah. Yeah, I like that moment of magic. And it makes me think about times where, you know, I see a client smiling or they say something or they're just keeping coming back, even though, you know, they're, they're, they're struggling in their life or they're not noticing immediate results. And I always wonder what makes these people continue to come back, even though they, they complain about being sore every time they see me. And I understand that it's because they're not there because of the pain that they're experiencing. They're there because of the impact on their lifestyle. And I think that we forget that as practitioners, as we think the person has a pain or a symptom. And if we haven't solved that, then we haven't helped them. But what you have to realize is that there's so much more beyond what you're doing, especially if you're you know, doing things like functional medicine, nutrition, chiropractic, acupuncture, where you're working with a person on a holistic scale, not just for the thing in front of them. They may have come for the back pain and the back pain might objectively be better, but maybe they're still feeling pain. 
but mm. the lifestyle has changed. People have said to me, look, my back is the same, but I sleep better. I don't fight with my wife anymore. I can run and play sports. I recover faster. I can touch my toes. And I'm like, that's amazing. And they say, I'm happy to live with the pain because my life is, is improved. And now what we have to understand, especially in healthcare, is that there are so many layers to an experience of someone that if we measure it based, if we're attached to the outcome, like we talked about, right? If, if the outcome is pain or no pain and we mm. measure it there, we forget about the magic moments of what changes in this person's life every, every other day with everything else. And we forget that actually we're still impacting this person. So just because they've come in for the content, mm. they stay for the community. They stay for the rest of it. That's amazing. And um, look, I'm super conscious of your time. Um, yes. Where can people connect with you online? Cool. So we have a Facebook group called We Build Tribes, 34,000 people, uh, coaches, consultants, experts that were just teaching every single day, giving insight on how to build their tribes. Uh, so that's probably the best place to start. We have our Group Launcher Live Challenge, uh, which is Group Launcher Live dot com so group launch live dot com uh, and you can certainly join our challenge as well our 40 47 dollar 14 day challenge amazing is that group launch and live spelt out uh and is spelt out a and d so it's group launcher live dot com oh, launcher there we go yeah perfect i'm gonna make sure that's in the show notes group launcher live uh that's amazing thank you so much for coming on the show really appreciate you amazing amounts of value uh, both high level and tactical which is what i love you take care Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the show. If you like the episode, please hit subscribe and leave us a review. I'd really appreciate it as it helps us get our episodes out to more people just like you who want to know how to increase their revenue, impact more people, and build businesses that work for the lifestyle they want. Now, I know your time is valuable, and I know that you are here to learn the secrets to success in your health business. So I have something special for you just for checking out the episode. Now, if you're a health professional, coach, or trainer in business, and you're serious about growing a profitable, impactful business, then pay attention because as a listener of the show, I want you to win. And so I've created a host of resources available exclusively for listeners of the show. So if you're tired of trying to figure out this game of business, marketing, and sales all on your own, and you're ready to just implement what's already proven to work rather than reinventing the wheel, I want you right now to go and check out healthcarebusinesssecrets.com forward slash insider. And there you will find over $5,000 worth of trainings, resources, and coaching available only for listeners of the show. There I'll give you the resources on everything from how to acquire 10 times more of your ideal clients using social media and paid ads, even referrals, how to increase your client conversion into packages at an 80 to 90% conversion rate like me, how to retain your clients for longer, getting them better results and making them happier, how to increase your prices and charge a premium to work with you and how you can build a six, multi-six, even seven-figure practice just like I did, but with a tenth of the time and a tenth of the effort. What I want you to realize is that everything I teach comes from exactly what I did to have success and still have success in my own health business, and I want to share that with you so you can have success too. So go check out healthcarebusinesssecrets.com forward slash insider right now and let me help you win big in your health business. Also remember to subscribe for two episodes every week full of the secrets to have success in your health business as well as leave us a review so we know what you thought of the show. And I'll see you on the next episode.